Welcome back, everybody, to the Victory World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato. My name's David, once again, and I am back with Stefan Mott. How are you doing, sir? Good. Uh, I was really pumped for um, a break, and then I didn't get a break, because that last set was really short. Yeah, sorry. Really uh, <laughs> showcasing the power of what can happen if you're not fully prepared for the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Yeah, and especially having... Like the Calyrex Shadow opponent didn't even see the Calyrex Shadow Rider in game one at all, yep. so it was a complete surprise in game two. And it, what a surprise Choice Specs was just to kind of obliterate even that assault vest for Libby, which we know is so bulky. Yeah, just an insane match. Going into another one though, this one is kind of cool. It's we're going back to the world of like kind of low stakes. Uh, the situation is we're going to group seven. We're going to be seeing Switzerland against Vietnam. Uh, Switzerland is effectively guaranteed first, and Vietnam oh, is effectively guaranteed fourth. Um, basically, I, I so it's not on the website, but I won my match, so we're guaranteed first. We only needed one set win. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a really fun one, though. I mean, the, the Vietnamese, we talked a little bit with the Vietnamese beforehand, and we were like, do you guys want to meme around? Do you guys want to like try hard? And they're like, no. Like We're, we're here to represent our country. We want to do our best. So we have some... Pretty cool matches coming our way this week, and we're going to be covering one of them right now. We are, and that's going to be with Demo Lokmik and Kang Tong of Vietnam as well. So uh, both these players have been pretty good for both their team members, and both were pretty hyped going into their this whole World Cup as well. So we're going to have a t look, take a little closer look at both of these players' as teams and their, some of their accomplishments as well. And... I think if we're going to be starting with Demo, then we're going to be seeing uh, a few On a nice accomplishments there. And there it is. Top eight in the Champions Cup, which was a such a huge online tournament. So many players. It's a very nice accomplishment to have. And But he has a little bit from a few years ago as well. T 2016, another restricted format. Top 16 in Europe regionals, which is very nice. But here we go. Here's the team. Zash, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Landorus, Incarnate, Regilecki, and that Rillaboom. Yeah, so a pretty standard Zacian team. The Finny has been something that's coming a little bit more into the meta recently. It's a nice way to sort of ward off potential burns, whether or not it's facing down a Scald option or just something with Will-O-Wisp. Uh, really, really nice to have. Lando, it's been omnipresent in this format. There's a few different ways you can run it, but it's basically there to just kill things very fast. And uh, yeah, I mean, the rest of the team is about as meta as you can get. Eleki, Rillaboom, Insin, we see them on so many different teams. There's a couple different ways you can run each of those Pokemon, but most of the time they function effectively the same way. And this team is all about positioning that Zacian to just be able to bowl over your opponent and start a little bit of a snowball effect. It is, and it's a very similar team to the team Demo used versus the Netherlands a couple of weeks back where he did win versus with a very similar team. I think uh, versus New Zealand, he did lose using a Cali Rex Shadow Rider team, so he looks like he's kind of gone back to what he's more comfortable with here. Knows what... Everyone, even though everyone is probably preparing for this, he's still won with it and he's still doing very well. So uh, nothing to shake a stick out for this team. I imagine there's going to be a lot of very nice plays coming from this man. But let's have a look at Kang Tong from Vietnam with Xerneas in DD Female, Suiku, Nihiligo, Entei, and again, the Landris Incarnate. So Xerneas, two weeks back to back for this man. Now this is like, a pretty interesting team. We've seen this a fair bit in the World Cup, really. Uh, a lot of the Xerneas teams tend to be like, here is my Xerneas, here is my Redirector, and here are four answers to Zacian. <laughs> uh, this <laughs> one is not quite as much so uh, in that vein, but we do have the Entei, which could be Scarfed. We do have that Landorus. We do have even a potential Scald on that Suicune, Tailwind on that Suicune, potentially. A lot of ways to sort of try to... Uh, position around that Zacian. That's really going to be the name of the game. Uh, Demo is going to be trying to position the Zacian in such a way that it can just win. And Kuang is going to be trying to prevent that from happening. And whoever is going to be more successful at that is probably going to run out the winner. Yeah, that sounds about right, Stefan. So, and Xerneas in DD Female right at the top there is exactly what this team is trying to do. We're going to try and set up the Xerneas. And we're going to go from there. So I really like the Ndidi to be shut off all those fake outs of which Kang has none of at the moment. And maybe not any priority attacks of his own either, unless there might be an extreme speed on the Entei there. So 
An interesting matchup for sure, even though the Zash might be a little bit standard there. It's definitely going to be, as you say, Stefan, on Demo's end to really deny those boosts here. Unless we see something like a haze on the Tapu Fini, this Xerneas could really run through this team. But let's get into this match. I'm imagining an Indeedy female potentially lead on Kung's end, possibly with the Xerneas too. I could see maybe uh, something to kind of counter Demo's anti Xerneas lead, which could be something to do with some fake outs, some Zashians. So, but he has no intimidate of his own. So this Zashian is going to be looking very strong he, and always at plus one attack when it's on the field. Yeah, we're going to be getting into game number one now to seeing what those leads are. I think you're probably right. An Indeedy female, even an Indeedy female Xerneas lead could potentially be a very, very threatening lead for Kwong to just try to get as much tempo on his side as possible. We talked a little bit about how the, the Zashian can try to position in such a way that it can roll through things, but the same thing is kind of true for the Xerneas. If it can get that Geomancy up, then it does have the ability to one-shot a lot of this team. It certainly does, and this is probably the best lead out for to getting up that Geomancy, but Tapu Fini is one of those Pokemon that gets a lot of moves. You always want like 10 moves on it at once. And we do see it's actually faster than the Ndidi, so the Psychic Terrain is actually going to be going up first, which may not make too much of a difference here, but it does depend on what this Tapu Fini's moves are, because we could see, say, a Light Screen or a Haze, but actually we do get a little peek here at Damo's team, and he doesn't have either of those, actually. But if he's able to kind of whittle down this Xerneas before it gets too strong or too fast, then maybe he's got a good shot, especially as when he, Zashin comes in versus these two, it's looking pretty good, unless we see maybe a Life Orb on the Indeedee female, which we saw quite early on in the series, carrying maybe Shadow Ball and the Expanding Force. And if he has that Mystical Fire as well, it actually is probably enough to two-shot some Zashians. So um, it's going to be down to how these players play versus whatever they've teched onto their Pokemon. But Tapuvini is actually the switch out, and Zashian, that great, great Pokemon, does come in. Yeah, no haze on the top of Fini makes this matchup a fair bit more uncomfortable for Damo. The Follow Me Geomancy looks like it's going to be the option here, and uh, the Valandros Earth Power is going to dish out quite a lot of damage to that Ndidi, but leaving it alive for yet another turn uh, is potentially a little bit difficult. But it's going to be a Gleam instead, not opting for that Geomancy. I guess a little bit concerned about that haze. Of course, we know that it's not on the Fini, but... Kwang does not. This is not an open Team Chief tournament. So opting for the safer play there um, from his perspective, not going to be the best case situation for him. If he had that Geomancy, all of a sudden this gets a little bit scary. But now the Ndidi is going to drop to another hit, and uh, that's going to be some pretty big damage into that Xerneas if a Sludge Bomb or something manages to go through after the Zashian takes out the Ndidi. Indeed. So you're going to be... Uh, quite behind us unless you would have got the Geomancy up this turn. But interestingly about Kong's team, even if when the Ndidi goes down, he has no fake out to kind of support it once the Xerneas is boosted up. So having the Ndidi on the field is going to be really crucial for uh, this, uh, to be able to deal with this Zashin. But Zashin actually goes for that substitute. And the Sludge Bomb does go into the Xerneas, protect. So Ndidi is able to get off and attack it. But is this expanding force enough to maybe break the substitute on this Zashin? Because often it is not. Landris does go down though. It does seem to have quite low special defense being, seeing how much it took from that Dazzling Gleam, but no breakage on that substitute. Overall, still like kind of nice. You get the Lando out of the way. That makes the matchup a little bit more favorable for things like Entei, things like the Nihi. Uh, the Rillaboom coming on in now is going to be able to potentially fake out this next uh, uh, move from the Xerneas. And things are still going to be a little bit awkward here, because without that Geomancy, the Xerneas is really not threatening to this team at all anymore. So, uh, potentially a Grassy Glide into the Ndidi, Behemoth Blade into that Xerneas. This is going to be a bad, bad turn for Kong, but no, it's not! He lands a Double Protect there, a very, very crucial Double Protect, uh, potentially to uh, prevent Fake Out from being a thing. Rillaboom not going for the Fake Out, but regardless, both of those Pokemon protecting, both of them will be safe for this turn. It is, so a nice play by Karg, assuming you do get off that double protect, which he does. Because now he is able to go for that follow me in Geomancy, covering for that fake out last turn. Uh, but if that Indeedy is still in range of the Grassy Glide, it still doesn't quite work here. But a lot a lot of Indeedy will want to run a lot of physical bulk, especially because you need kind of that max physical bulk and that, with that HP to be able to live the Zashin Behemoth Blades. So... And if it is that, this Indeedee might be able to live, depending on how much offense this Rillaboom has. So here's the follow me. 
do we see it lift this hit? No, this is gonna. This is a grassy seed Rillaboom, I believe. So that's gonna be a pretty easy knockout for it. The Indeedy falls, and now Geomancy or not, you're not surviving this Zacian hit. All of a sudden, the game is flipped on its head as Zacian is just gonna be able to take out this Xerneas, essentially uncontested. And with a substitute up, even something like an Entei coming in is really not gonna apply all that much pressure to this Zacian. No, it's not. I think. Uh, Kong really needed to get his Entei in or, or some other form of speed control in there a little bit sooner to deal with this Zacian, especially as the substitute. E even without the substitute there, it was still going to be taking that knockout. But and with it up at the moment, even if this land was Choice Scarf, it's still not going down at this point. And Nihiligo is actually the other choice that Kong has brought in here. So no Suicune, which is probably fair to say. She's probably going to be bringing it more versus... Um, some more specially offensive Pokemon or maybe other Xerneas here. But no Entei, I think, is really surprising, especially versus a Zacian team, which is probably the main thing you want to be bringing versus it. That's the main thing I'd be scared of if I'm bringing Zacian too. But maybe Nihiliga has got a few tricks off its sleeve as well. But Zacian is next going for that move. It's about picking the blade, and this is likely going to be a KO on something. Yeah, just going to be straight into the knee. -he. It's not really common to see a sash on that anymore, and it's not going to be running one. So the Nihiligo is going to be going on down quite easily here. Maybe we see a, a, a bit of like a, a consolation KO, but no, it's Earth Power, not going for the Sludge Bomb, uh, which is, in the context of the set, it's nice. I don't know if he has Sludge Bomb, but if he does, it's nice to not reveal it since it's, it's not 100% usage anymore. But the Woodhammer is going to be able to knock this Lando down to just about 1 HP. And uh, a Grassy Glide should be more than enough to finish up this game. And it kind of goes to what we were saying before the game. If Demo can find a way to position his Zacian in such a way that it can just snowball over this entire team, it's going to have a good time. It is. And interestingly, if I think if Kong had just gone for the Geomancy turn one, he'd have been in a really nice position. I wonder if Demo kind of led that Tapu Fini just to kind of bait Kong into like not going for the Geomancy because it does have a few options up its sleeve for um, dealing with Xerneas. So and instead he just switches it straight back out into the Zacian as he gets a little bit of chip on that Indeedee, which was just perfect enough to just set up that end game that he perfectly wanted, especially as that Xerneas didn't even set up at all. So going into game two, Stefan, how do you think uh, Kong is going to be able to change things up here? Well, I think we need to see some dogs. He needs to let the dogs out because honestly, I mean, we talked about Entei as being a great answer to Zacian, but the Suicune, even though it doesn't like KO the Zacian or anything, it has the potential to use Scald for burns. It has the potential to drop a Tailwind, which is going to enable that Landorus to do a lot better. And uh, those two Pokemon are going to be super, super important. Xerneas is a weird one here, right? Because you kind of want that in Didi as your, your go-to idea of how to set up Geomancy is to follow me and then Geomancy. But the Ndidi may have to drop in order for uh, the, both of the dogs to come in. I really feel like we need to see Entei, at least one of Entei and Suicune come into this next game, though. Absolutely agreed here. So let's get into this game two now. And we know that now that Debo is one game away from taking the win for Switzerland as we get straight into this. So I'm expecting maybe a Xerneas lead, maybe some Ndidi, and maybe just going for the Geomancy this time, because I think having seen Demo switch out his Tapu Fini immediately, you know you don't even have light screen probably, but it's a complete switch up here. Yeah, so the Nihiligo comes once again, as does the Landorus. I think the Landorus is effectively a, a must-have in this game, but this is still kind of awkward. I don't... Like, the Landorus lived the uh, the Woodhammer last turn, but is it going to live a plus one Behemoth Blade from Zacian? There's no Intimidate on this team, as you mentioned in the pregame, so... It could be very, very difficult to actually uh, survive a turn. It looks like Demo is going to be opting to play a little bit safer here. Maybe worried about, uh, you, you know, if, if it does survive, if it's super bulky, then maybe it's able to live, or maybe it's even running something like a Choice Scarf, which is very uncommon. But, you know, if you're up 1-0 and you want to play safe, it's a good way to, <laughs> to just make sure you don't lose to something unexpected. Bolt Switch going to come on in. We'll see if Demo decided to switch up his Pokemon. It looks like he didn't, uh, just switching up the leads a little bit. I'm actually not sure if he brought Reggie Lucky in the last game. I think we only actually saw three Pokemon. But uh, the Rillaboom comes on in, and I guess we'll see what the game plan is here with this uh, Nihiligo. 
Yeah, we will. Rillaboom comes straight in from that Reggie Lecky. Power Gem is the choice. No Meteor Beam revealed, interestingly, on that first turn. As Life there's Orb. the reason why. Life Orb. So getting that immediate power, especially from that those poison moves, and the other power does go into the protecting Zush in there. So Nightly Go is able to heal up a little bit, and plus the Rillaboom here. So a little bit of a dead turn, a little bit of positioning there, a little bit of reveal of some items too. So really interesting Nile Ego set, not something never seen the life orb before. So I wonder if maybe we've got a power gen sludge bomb and maybe like a third attack of some sort, which life orb would enable you to run if you're not running that meteor beam, such as a grass knot maybe. Maybe not a game changer in this game, but it's still a nice lead nonetheless, especially if you were expecting that incineral to come in. However, we know from Demo's end anyway, he hasn't even brought it this time. So the Ligo isn't offering too much here. But with that Rillaboom chipped down a little bit, it's probably now in range. But Kong still needs to find a way to kind of get in that Xerneas if he's going to be able to take this game. Yeah, the double in the Landorus is going to be more than enough to remove that from the field. And uh, if the Entei didn't come once again, that's the biggest threat to the Zacian on this entire team. So Landorus going down without accomplishing anything is a really, really painful turn of events for Kong. Uh, I guess Sludge Bomb into the uh, into the Rillaboom seems to make the most sense, so it should be a little bit of a trade at the very least, but not one that I think Kong is going to be too happy with. No, uh, so you've you've traded two Pokemon, that's for sure, but the the two that are left are a Zushin and a <laughs> Nihiligo, so um, it's still looking very much in Damo's favor, depending on what's been brought here. Because so I think an Entei switching from Kong there would have been really nice, especially into the the old Zashian Rillaboom there. You have no Incineroar of your own at the moment. But yeah, here is the Inci Entei now. So it hasn't taken a lot of damage coming in this time, it, this way even. So even with some Reggie Lecky shenanigans, it may be able to live the double up here, which should mean it offers a lot of offensive pressure into this Zashian. So it could be the room that Kwang needs to maybe pivot out his Nihiligo, maybe try and get in the Xerneas and just threaten that Zashian with a KO. But it's still a not very safe position that he's got at the moment because if that the double up maybe is enough into the NSA, then that's not looking too great. But even if Demo say preserves the Sashin, maybe switch Landorus, you've still got a lot of offense going forward onto the Xerneas and a lot of speed control too. Because I guess the one thing that Kwang has is that he hasn't revealed the item on his NSA. And if it's that choice scarf, it could pick up this Sashin very quickly. Uh, it's going to be a switch out. I feel like that was one of those turns where Damo was thinking to himself, um, in the event that the Entei didn't switch, I really wish I had close combat instead of Sacred Sword, because I'm pretty sure that the double up of Sacred Sword would not have picked up that Entei. But again, Kwong has no way of knowing that it's Sacred Sword instead of close combat. So now he's going to see that. The Xerneas is going to take this hit very, very easily. But now it's low enough that, I mean, the... the this entire team, with the exception of the Entei, is beginning to get very dangerously chipped. Power Gem is going to come out and dish a big, big chunk of damage to the Regieleki, but the Focus Sash procs, so really not what Kong was looking for, I don't think. And from here, even like a Volt Switch into the Nini Lego might be able to pick that up, so uh, a bit awkward to be sure. I don't really know what Kong does from here, because the Entei, if he positions it well, is more than happy to deal with the Zashi, and of course a Flare Blitz, something like that, should be able to pick up the Zashi in no problem. But there's still a full HP Tapu Fini in the back, and Xerneas doesn't have a, a super easy time with that Pokemon, even though it's not running Haze. Yeah, so even though we've got, like, Regilecki, it's like, Demo has all the speed, and he has all the offense going to this turn. There's no fake out, there's no redirection for this Xerneas. Like, both these Pokemon could probably go down this very turn, so... We do see the Nihiliga protect from the incoming Thunderbolt, but I imagine this is the Behemoth Major straight up into the Xerneas. And even if an Entei switches in, there's no Intimidate, it still takes a huge chunk and then put, just puts it in range of something else going into the next turn. So as we see, Xerneas does end up fainting here. So Huang is down to just a few of his Pokemon left. And and if there's no maybe no extreme speed to pick off this, like Regilecki, even then Nihiliga is not being able to do too much damage to the Zashin. It's just, the Zashin is just sitting there and just offering so much offense every single turn and kind of yep. just struggling to find a little bit of room just to kind of get his NT into the position that he needs it. The other problem, right, is that let's say it has extreme speed. That means it doesn't have choice scarf, so it's still going to underspeed the, the Zashian. And if it doesn't have extreme speed, if it is choice scarf, then the Electro Web is going to allow it to underspeed Zashian. So either way, Demo's in a pretty good position. I think the win con here is, to, is for uh, Demo to miss Electro Web. I think that's what Kwong needs. Uh, we'll see if that happens, but the Electro Web comes in, it connects with both, 
The Nihiligo should be able to survive this, but that's already a pretty chunky bit of damage there into the Entei. Sacred Sword, I don't think it's going to pick up, but uh, it might. And even if it doesn't, the Flare Blitz recoil should be more than enough to get rid of the Entei. So uh, actually, it's going to be a Behemoth Blade here into the Nihiligo. So it looks like Reggie Alecki may live to see another day. Uh, we'll see if the Entei is able to pick up the Zacian. Yeah, but at this point, you've got rid of the Xerneas, so Zash has pretty much done its job in this matchup, as uh, Flare Blitz is the choice of move from Kwong into the Zashin that should be enough for a KO, and it is, yeah, so Zashin does go down, but um, if you if you are choice scarf, as you say, Stefan, you are now locked into it, and you can't go for the extreme speed here. Uh, and Reggie you're locked Lecky... into it against a Tapu Fini, which is uh, not a fun time for the Entei, I don't think. However, I think the... We, um, if the Tapu Fini does end up coming in, yeah, which we do see as the Citrus Berry, it's, yeah, not a great time here. I can't even think of any Grass, like, or Electric or Poison moves that Entei even gets, so um, it's looking pretty rough at the moment for Kwang here. However, we have seen from the Tapu Fini, it doesn't actually have any water moves, so it's it's going to be a bit of a, a chipping game here, but I think with Entei being at the, low, the health that it's at, um, it's still looking pretty rough, and Tapu Fini has its own health recovery in that Citrus Berry too. I like the idea to go for the Protect on the Regieleki just in case it's an Assault Vest variation with that Extreme Speed. Uh, but with the Flare Blitz coming out, it does look like it's it's probably the Choice Scarf variation. And uh, even with Moonblast probably not doing an insane amount of damage to the Entei, that's still a 2 at KO from where it was. And the Regieleki is going to have absolutely no trouble shutting this down with a Thunderbolt. And yeah, I mean, as we said before the match, the whole thing just kind of came down to positioning that Zacian in both games and just allowing the Zacian to run rampant. And unfortunately for Kong, he wasn't really able to prevent that from happening. Xerneas naturally struggles a lot with, uh, with Zacian, and the rest of the team just wasn't able to pick up that slack. So Damo was able to claim the win 2-0 as Switzerland defeat Vietnam in this match, or in this game. Yes, it... They do. So congratulations to Demo. Uh, congratulations to Kwong. I think uh, he had a really strong team idea, for sure, because I think, especially in that game one, the Xerneas and Didi, I think, like, especially if you watch your Kwong and you watch that back and you see Tapu Fini has, like, nothing for Xerneas. Like, you just yeah. go, you must, his face must be in his hands. Like, if I'd just gone for the GMAT, he'd have been in a really nice position. To be fair for Demo, like, even even so, like, Zash is still switching in on, like, the Ndidi and the Xerneas is still looking pretty tight, um, but it's, it's still a very well-played set. Um, David played exactly to his win condition, getting exactly what he needed, substituting at the exactly the right time as well. So I think it was a well-deserved set, And uh, but commiserations to Vietnam. That does put Switzerland 2-0 and up versus the, yep. them in this week. So... Uh, I'm done today, so I, I hope you guys enjoyed my casting, but there's still one more match to go, and you may have seen my face light up. That's because on the little preview screen that you guys can't see yet, I just saw the teams that are going to be coming out. You don't <laughs> want to go anywhere for this one. Hong Kong against South Korea, and it's going to be wild. I am so excited to watch that match. Oh, it's going to be good, Stefan. You should definitely stick around. If you're going to, I don't know if you're going to better one other thing, but while you're brushing your teeth, definitely have a look at this dog trio if it's going to come, because I am very excited for this too. It's Hong Kong versus South Korea, Patrick Cheng versus Sang Hoon Cha, and we're going to be right back after this short break. <laughs> 